Are you okay? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new sewing project. I am so excited about this one. This one has been in the works for a while now. The idea for this dress kind of popped up towards the end of when I was making my glitter tool gown, my Teota Matoshi inspired glitter tool gown, which I made, failed and then remade successfully. <laughs> it was a journey, I will link to the videos um, in the description box of the info card. As I was making that dress, I was so inspired to make more of those types of ball gowns, I guess. Just beautiful, whimsical dresses. And I really wanted to use some more of that really interesting, beautiful top fabric. Um, so last time I used a glittery pink tool and I really wanted to do something floral. And I know that you can find some really beautiful, really interesting embroidered and or printed tool on Etsy. So I went on, looked forever and ended up finding this fabric right here. It is a very fine see-through fabric with a combination of printed and 3D flowers. The flowers are on a vine and it is just stunning. Absolutely stunning. I fell in love with this the moment I saw it and I knew that this needed to be my next dress. Now I know that I said in my last video that I wanted to make a mint green gown and I set out with that idea in mind but then I realized that florals on green would kind of like green on green is very difficult to make work and especially if you have something like this that is on a green vine like the greens need to match or at least be in the same color family and that is so hard to do online when you can't see the physical fabrics and i needed to order all of my materials for this online so after searching for the perfect green to use underneath this i eventually just gave up also because this fabric as you can see once you fold it up it is not exactly see-through and it is not white. If you ask me, this is pretty obviously lilac. So I kind of let that guide me and decided that this gown needed to be lavender. And lavender it will be. So I have my base fabrics here. This is going to be my lining fabric. I got once again a satin. I'm pretty sure this is actually the same satin that I used for the pink glitter gown. I also got tool in that color, a lot of it. This is that beautiful fine mesh kind of bridal tool. So I'm gonna use this for mostly for the skirt and I made sure to get a lot of this. So we have that, we have this, and then this is gonna go on top and this is gonna be my outer layer. This is gonna look great together. It is a wonderful color scheme. It is actually the color scheme that I am using in my garden. <laughs> greens and whites and purples and pinks and yeah I think this is gonna be absolutely wonderful it's very girly once again but that is the point of these when I'm making a princessy dress like this it needs to be girly as for the design I want to do something that is pretty similar in some ways to the glitter tool gown but also different in some other ways so first of all I would really love and I might regret this but I would love for my skirt to have a little bit of a train I think that would be absolutely gorgeous with this like vine flowery fabric if the vines just grew up the back of the train the skirt oh gorgeous and i kind of want to do sleeves but i'm not entirely sure if it's gonna work in this fabric because i'm a little bit worried that the 3d flowers uh, may be a bit too heavy for that to work because if it's a sleeve it needs to be quite poofy and yeah we'll just we'll have to see i'm gonna have to oh actually this might work. This might. Other thing is, it might just be way too much, but I also think it's okay if this dress is a, a little bit much. <laughs> Basically, we're gonna go all out and I will just figure this out as I go. What I do know is I want to make the bodice first and for the base of the bodice, I'm just gonna use the same pattern that I used last time because it worked perfectly in the end. I know now to make it a lot narrower and I do believe I marked that on my pattern last time. So uh, I'm gonna just double check that and use that pattern to make my bodice with. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did last time. So I'm gonna make the bodice out of my base fabric with one layer of the base tool on top just to ensure some color consistency between the top and the skirt. And then of course a layer of the beautiful floral fabric. So it's gonna look a little something like this. Uh, I do have a pattern to contend with this time. 
which is gonna complicate things compared to the last dress that I made. And I just really hope I have enough of this fabric. But we'll see, we will find out. So yeah, bodice first, let's get started with this project. <laughs> Before we move on, a quick word from today's sponsor, because this video is very kindly sponsored by Holtzcairn. If you're ever looking for some truly unique accessories, then Holtzcairn is the place to go. They are a Vienna-based brand that make accessories out of wood and stone and other natural materials. And by accessories, I mean anything ranging from watches, sunglasses, bags to jewelry. They have quite an extensive range on their website and everything is absolutely stunning, well worth a browse. Their items would make absolutely fantastic gifts. I have a couple of them here that I have been wearing and using for a while now. First of all, of course, the beautiful watch that you've seen me wear many times before. This is a walnut and rose gold watch, absolutely stunning. Sticking with the walnut theme, I also have these jewelry pieces from them, which are uh, walnut and gold. So this necklace is a hexagon shape, a walnut center, and then the bracelet has gold and walnut beads that alternate to spell love in Morse code, just so cute and I love using that piece as a layering piece. It's very easy to combine with other jewelry. And another item I have from them, if you ask me, this is the absolute showstopper, is this handbag. Just wow. I feel so cool when I wear this because it is, it's a wooden handbag. It's really well designed. The fact that it's wood doesn't subtract from its practicality at all. It is really easy to use, has a magnetic clip on the top or clasp. It closed magnetic closure <laughs> and comes with a little chain so you can either use it as a clutch or have the chain on it, uh, make it a little bit easier to carry. It's spacious enough for everything I would need on an evening out and I just absolutely adore this. They make these from stone as well. Uh, I believe they have some slate ones on the website, just absolutely stunning and so cool. So definitely be sure to check that out. I do still have my discount code running with them. You can use code loopsy 15 for 15% 15 off of anything on their website. And this discount is ending soon. So if you wanted to use this, now is the time to do so. So I will have a link to their website in the description box below. And I have a huge thank you to Holtzcairn for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to sewing.
I figured I'd start by working on the cups. So I just quickly whipped up some foam cups, which apparently I can do pretty fast now, which is great. And I think they look really good as well, so I'm very happy with those. I also block fused interfacing to my satin layer and then cut out all of my cup pieces out of that. And I also cut out my cup pieces from the tool layer. So now I'm ready to cut out my main fabric layer. Just like I did with the last dress, I am just cutting all of these pattern pieces out of my three main fabrics to make my cups and then for the bodice I'm going to do the satin and the lining layer out of the individual pattern pieces which they they fold out flat completely flat there are no like curved seams in there so I can then just do the tool and the top fabric as the whole kind of bodice in one piece which eliminates any seams on the outside so I'm going to do that again this time but for the cups I am cutting out the individual pieces because there are curved seams there so I have come to the point now where I need to cut out my main fabric. Yeah, I need to figure out the placement of the pattern now because obviously this is going to show in the final dress in a fairly prominent position. So I need to make sure that this looks good and I'm just debating whether I want 3D flowers on the cups or no 3D flowers on the cups. Like is that gonna look weird? Or is it gonna look weird if it's not on there? Let me just lay this down, try and place my pattern pieces and see where I land. The cups are finished. I did end up adding some embroidered flowers onto them. I think it would look weird if they are too different from the rest and there's gonna be 3D flowers everywhere, so I just kept them on. Anyways, it's time to work on the bodice now. I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna make the lining first just so that I can, you know, get back in the swing of things a little bit. And for this dress, the lining that I'm gonna use is this. Remember this dress? <laughs> I made this a uh, couple years back now. Is it has been years? I'm not sure. Anyways, a while ago and I hate it so it went straight back into my fabric pile. And I'm now going to use this. I think this would be the perfect thing to use as the lining fabric. I'm just going to go ahead and pick a few seams here. Luckily this has a tiered uh, gathered skirt so there are plenty of bits of fabric that I can use from this and I'm just going to go ahead and transfer my pattern onto this. Lining is done here. That was actually really quick to assemble, so I'm just going to do the same thing with my interfaced satin. And then I'm actually going to attach these two together and make my boning channels, because I do want to bone this again. So yeah, I'm just going to work on that later, but first I'm going to cut these out of my satin fabric. Make another one of these.
We're getting really close to finishing this bodice. It is now fully assembled and lined and I think it looks marvelous. I am very happy with how this came out. I ended up having to tweak some things here and there. I was actually about to line this and squish my boning in between the main fabric and the lining but then I realized I can't do that because all of the top layers of fabric like the overlays need to be sewn into the lining as well in order to look nice from the outside. What I ended up having to do is use the seam allowance on the satin layer of the bodice as my boning channel. So basically it's just this layer has a channel in the seam allowance as I mentioned. I don't currently have any boning that fits that but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and buy some zip ties again because um, it doesn't need a lot of structure. Most of the weight just sits on the hips. It just needs to be held up a little. Uh, plus I'm thinking of giving these sleeves so I might do sleeves that are a bit more structural and just hold the dress up a little bit better. And next I actually just need to insert my cups into the proper places and that's gonna be my bodice more or less finished. So yeah, let me just go ahead and do that. Attach this, this was a, I remember this being hard so I need to take my time to do this properly. And then I will be back to show you the results. But I must say so far, I love this color combination. Cups are in, but I just realized I don't actually have enough Cups are in, but I just realized I don't actually have enough of this underwire channeling to um, do both of the cups. Then I realized I have some left from when I made my lingerie set, which is green, which actually would go nicely with this project. But once again, it's just about enough to do one of the cups. And I'm not gonna do one nude and one green. That's just weird. So I'm gonna have to order more underwire channeling. But for now, I think this is it. This is about as far as I'm gonna get with this project this week, but I am very happy with the progress I've made. I think it looks absolutely wonderful. I do you think it was a good choice to do it on the lilac? We'll have to see what it looks like when it's an entire gown and quite overwhelming. But so far, very happy with it. I think it looks great. Let me point you down a little. Once it's done, it's gonna look a little something like this. Obviously, I can't really put it on right now over all of my clothing, but yeah, really, really nice. So next time I'm going to add sleeves to this and the skirt with the hopefully train in the back. It's gonna be fantastic and I cannot wait, but I'm gonna have to go ahead and gather all the materials I'm apparently missing before I do that. So yeah, definitely stay tuned for that, but I really hope you enjoyed this this first part of making what I am now officially dubbing my garden gown because these are the exact colors that are in my garden at the moment. Green, lilac, pink and white are my colors so this is now my garden gown and I cannot wait to finish it. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see the rest of this gown and all of the other things that I'm up to, of course. Don't forget to check out Hold Scaring through the link in the description box below. We are coming towards the tail end of my discount code, so definitely be sure to use that now while you still can. There is another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you for watching once again, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!